All right. Welcome, everybody. I appreciate you taking time out to learn about how to level up your bug fixing skills with Bug Bust. My name is Jacob Sullivan. I'm a principal product manager with AWS. Um, I work on AI DevOps products. So this is where we look at how we can use data science to improve everything from code development to cloud operations. Um, I've been with AWS about three years and two of those years with AI DevOps. And I'm presenting today with Wayne. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm Wayne. I'm an AWS solution architect from Singapore. So typically, I help customers with solutioning on the AWS cloud. And more recently this year, <clears throat> I actually helped my customer with uh, hosting a bug bus event. So I'm happy to be here to help share the experience and outcomes with you. Awesome. So today, we're going to talk about bug busting and bugs in general. Uh, we'll cover briefly the impacts of increased software complexity, how you prevent software bugs in production, both today with existing methods and using things like the bug bus platform. Wayne's going to walk us through a customer use case of a customer that had an opportunity to use this service uh, here in the past couple of months. And then we're going to plug the ongoing AWS bug bust reInvent challenge. If you haven't checked it out, uh, we're going to talk more about it later, but it's going on right now uh, and will be for the next uh, 15 or so hours. So we'll get to that in just a minute. So I think as everybody understands, software code is growing exponentially in complexity. So we've got this cool little chart to try and illustrate what this means. If you look at the average phone application, it'll have 40,000 lines of code, electric cars, 10 million lines of code, social media platforms, 62 million lines of code. I like that it takes six times as much to run social media than it does an autonomous vehicle, but hey. Um, if you were to try and read all of this code, just to sit down and read it, it would take 20 hours to read the average phone application. It would take almost four years to read the 62 million lines of code social media platform. That's just reading, right? That's not even debugging it yet. And I think we can all agree that that complexity is only going to increase. Yeah, and this applies to my customer as well. The customer that I've been working for actually shared with me that they currently have 400 apps and uh, thousands of repositories. So that's a lot of code that they are having that's, at the moment. There's a lot of code. Yeah. And we hear that from customers small and large, right? The complexity of code is, is really continuing to grow. And with this complexity comes more errors, right? On average, software developers make 100 to 150 errors for every 1,000 lines of code. And this is very expensive, costing almost $3 trillion in the US in 2018. 18% of this was attributed to tech debt. Every software developer is super familiar with tech debt. We always carry it with us. Um, but it's expensive, right? This complexity and, and errors are expensive. Yes, and I think our CTO, Werner Vogels, actually spoke about you know, how much it would cost for each of these error and bugs in the code, right? So typically, it will cost about 700 USD. So if you were to allow the, the, the bug to go to production and fix it in production, that will actually cost a lot more than if you were to catch it earlier. So to that end, the customer that we're working with has been automating their release and test, so they auto automate as much as possible, so none of the production release is actually done manually. And so we hear that a lot, right? There are, there are mechanisms and tools that we're putting into place to try and shift left, trying to automate, trying to catch earlier, because the longer it goes, the more impactful it is. As those bugs make it into production, they have negative impacts across all of our stakeholders. They're felt by your customers. They're felt by your company's reputation. There's financial impact. And they're felt by the developer. Right? The developer who's writing the code and the reputational risk that they feel and the pain that they feel themselves as they're working on these products. So we pulled some examples, of course, how code bugs can be dangerous for your customers. We've got two examples here. Major automobile company had a bug in their software, 
cause the car to accelerate to 100 miles an hour and the anti-lock brakes to lag. And a bug in a major healthcare system put 10,000 heart patients at risk for receiving incorrect medication. Now, many of our enterprises do work on mission critical and safety related software, and these are real concerns that happen. Um, this also impacts other types of bugs, impairing your customer experience and adding friction overall. And they can have significant financial impact. Security vulnerability in a multinational credit reporting agency. 146 million customers lost their personal data. 45 million in settlement payments. Major trading firms sending out 4 million stock orders. 440 million in losses. These examples and anecdotes may be extreme in some cases, but man, you can't go a week without hearing about another security use case or another set of personal data that's been lost um, due to security or software vulnerabilities. So today, how do we try and prevent software bugs in production? Well, we throw people at it, right? 620 million developer hours a year are spent on debugging software failures. That's not debugging software and code reviews, that's bugs that have made it into production and you're debugging failures that have already impacted your customers and your business. To prevent this, we have the code review processes in place. And those certainly vary, right? I'm sure many of us have automated processes where we're doing code check-ins and each of those reviews are uh, reviewed by our peer developers or reviewed by our managers in place. Um, we'll host bug bash events. I launched three different features across my services this week and last week and the week before we were in the series of bug bashes as a team um, trying to find those bugs in production. Yeah, so my customer also shared with me how they ex actually execute the testing. Um, and a very recent movement is uh, what we call the shift left testing. So the idea is that if you have a pipeline, you try to test as early as possible. You can conduct peer reviews. Once you check in your code, there should be automated testing. And my customer has been using a traditional static code sta uh, scanning tool called SonarCube. And when they came to us to host the bug bus event, they were actually looking for a more efficient way of, to actually co complement what they currently have as well. And they heard of Code Guru that is able to inject machine learning to actually discover these bugs. And that's why they wanted to have this bug bus event to actually find out how efficient uh, Code Guru will be. So we'll come back to Code Reviewer in a second and the, and the machine learning involved, but there are steps for effectively running a bug bash. And they're pretty straightforward, right? Schedule the event, you define the process for documenting the bugs, set up a communication channel. For many of us, right, that's probably a Slack or chat channel. We used to all sit in the same room. We don't do that as much anymore uh, when running bug bashes providing some type of incentive for your teams, providing some type of recognition for your team. So it has a common structure, whether those incentives are, are prizes or just appreciation for management, or maybe we all get to keep working together. Um, it has an effective structure that you see today when, when those are run manually. Yeah, so with all these steps that's listed over here, right? So imagine if you were to do this bug, uh, bug bus just by yourself today with your team, how would you carry this out? Maybe you will have the static code scanning tool that I've mentioned, or maybe you will ask your developers to have conduct peer reviews to discover those bugs. So we can imagine the amount of time that you will need to invest in. And also, what will be the communication tool that you will use for claiming bugs, for scoring um, among the, these developers so that they can see their leadership bots, right? So that's going to be a lot of setup, right, to just run one uh, bucketon for your team. So Jacob is going to share with us how bug bus can actually automatically help you do all of these steps. So now we get to the good stuff. So AWS bug bust. We developed a platform that sits on top of an existing product, Code Guru Reviewer 
that helps facilitate this, this uh, competition. And it tries to automate as much of the process as it possibly can. Um, so we'll talk through the customer use case and Wayne will kind of give us an example in a second, but we really tried to, to uh, gamify the process. Um, and there's lots of aspects to it that work quite well in BugBust. It certainly facilitates the identification of the bug. So it uses our machine learning service of CodeGuru to go through and identify bugs that are in your existing um, software repos. Um, it provides a platform for registering your developers. It has a, uh, a leaderboard to be able to track the points that are awarded. Uh, we award points for different types of bugs. We have different point levels, uh, and I'll talk about that in just a second as well. And what we found is that uh, just the simple collecting these leaderboards, providing a forum for you to agree on the list of bugs, assigning and claiming the bugs, that developers are actually having fun, right? These are things that, that they need to do anyway, but the deterministic nature, there's no quibbling or arguing over whether or not the system found a bug. It takes care of all that for you, um, and it facilitates the competition. And the leadership board, we, we've used it internally at AWS. We've had quite a bit of success with some external partners as well. So we're trying to make something that is very useful, both more efficient, but also fun from a team perspective. Um, I'll talk more about what reviewers are doing under the covers, but first, let's, let's walk through uh, the use case with Wayne. Yeah, sure. All right, so as I mentioned, this year I actually ran this uh, bug bus event with my customer, and we have good outcomes, which I will share with you over the next few slides. But before I do that, let me introduce you to the profile of the customer. So this customer is actually in the FSI industry, um, in a banking segment, and uh, it's a very large uh, bank in Singapore, but they actually have customers that is all over Asia Pacific, and they are a team which is uh, very diverse as well. They actually have more than 20,000 developers, um, all you know, dispersed in different countries uh, across Asia Pacific. And 10 years ago, this customer actually embarked on a digital transformation journey. And they have actually decided that as part of this journey, they will become digital to the core, right? So the digital transformation that we are all familiar with um, applies to like digital engagements. Like for example, you can build a mobile app to interact with your customer, or maybe you can put a chatbot out there to make things more efficient for the customer. So these are all systems of engagement. But what this customer also decided is that they will become digital to the core. And by that, they actually mean that they have identified certain core pillars right, that will help them accelerate this digital journey. So these core capabilities and pillars um, just calling our example could be like the container platform, right? So they decided on what, what is the container platform that they wanted to use. Um, they enabled their team and set up this container platform that will actually help them accelerate uh, their journey in digital transformation. So that's what we call digital to the core. And what's also very interesting is that they also decided that they will be part of the customer journey and become invisible, right? So that, that is something that is, sets them apart from the rest of the banks that's out there. So they do recognize that customers like us, we don't really do banking because we are interested in carrying out banking transactions, right? So when we do banking, it is a mean to an end, right? What we really want to do as consumers is that we are trying to buy a property out there. We are trying to buy a car that's out there. Right? We are trying to live our lives right? and do the things that we are interested in. And as part of that, we make use of banking services. And banking services should be frictionless. Right? So traditionally, we have been filling out forms to apply for loans and approvals. And so what this bank wanted to do is to become invisible 
And what they do is that they actually partner with many of these partners out there that's part of the entire ecosystem, um, such as, and they actually build a marketplace uh, together with like the property agents as well as the car sellers. And the loan approvals then become part of that process, right? Um, to get the loan approvals. And that way, customer, it makes it very easy for this customer to carry out these transactions. And thirdly, they also wanted to create a startup culture. So they, embrace, they kind of learn from the technology companies like Amazon. And they, they learned that just like Amazon, we all started uh, with running a huge monolith. And then we learned to operate as a two pizza team to innovate faster and experiment faster. So, this bank also enabled their developers and built up a culture to let them operate like a startup. So they have been carrying out a lot of experiments um, and from what I gathered, they have conducted at least a thousand experiments in the last uh, five years. So that's the profile of the customer that actually ran this bug bus with us. So how did they actually get started with the event, right? So the event was actually initiated by their head of technology. Um, and he actually, actually learned from social media that uh, our CTO, Werner Vogels, uh, spoke about the bug bus. Um, and then he became uh, quite interested to how um, he can bring new innovation to his team through bug bus. At the top of his mind is that there, are, there will be a few key benefits uh, by running this bucketon. The first of all, he, he would have the chance to actually allow the developers to inspect their code, right, and ensure that there is uh, code quality improvements and have the highest standard in terms of code quality. And Code Guru also helps to inspect you know, the security vulnerabilities as well especially with regards to those that are in the AWS SDK, it makes sure that um, you are using as the AWS SDK with the best security, best practices. So he's also motivated to improve the security that's in his code. And moreover, as we know, the pandemic has been lasting for quite a while. At one point in time, the thousands of developers are actually all working remotely across the different countries. And he wanted a way to actually engage them. So running a hackathon is a good way to actually engage these developers and have fun at the same time. So to that end, what the team did was they actually put together a group of engineers, about eight of them, and they reached out to AWS, so we had an initial discussion on how we actually run to run the event. And we actually spent the next few weeks uh, to work out a plan to actually run Bug Bus. So as Jacob has shared, um, we identified what are the prizes that AWS are sponsor and uh, the customer will sponsor as well. We also identified what will be the applications that they will bring on board. And the application that they identified is a front-end uh, customer uh, engagement application where that allows customers to actually do their digital banking. So it is a very critical app, and that's why they, they will actually want to improve the code in that app. And after we have identified the repositories, we also integrated Code Guru to inspect those re repositories and discover the bugs that's in the re those repositories. And after which, uh, we actually work with uh, some of the developers to do a pilot test, to do a pilot run, uh, and that proved to be successful. And in September this year, we ran the event over a course of uh, two weeks, right? Um, and I'm going to share with you the results 
from that two weeks. So, how many lines of codes did we actually scan? One billion, right? So from the five repositories that they, they actually brought um, to debug bus, one billion lines of code was actually scanned. Can you imagine if you were to go out there and uh, scan them, read them manually to identify those bugs? It will actually take you 60 years to do that. But can you guess how long Code Guru took to actually went through this code? Any, any guesses? One day? It was actually close to half an hour. Yeah, so it's pretty efficient, right, for Code Guru to actually use machine learning to go through these one billion lines of code. So customer was happy that uh, Code Guru was quite efficient. And when they started to actually execute and solve the bugs, we realized that there was a trend. So within the first three days, they actually fixed 80% of, uh, uh, of the, the, the bugs that were actually discovered. So as you can see from the graph, there's about more than 1,000 uh, of them, of the bugs that were discovered in these five repositories. They fixed 80% in the first three days. So three days into the event, we start to get worried that we will not have enough bugs for the developers to solve. <laughs> yeah. So actually what happened was that um, the developers actually went out there and they solved the easier bugs first, right? And the repetitive one. So these are the kind of like the low hanging fruits. Uh, so they kind of solved all these uh, pretty easily. And then for the rest of the two weeks, they went to tackle the bugs that were more challenging to solve. So remember, I spoke about the value of a bug and how much it will cost to an organization. Research has mentioned that it costs about 700 USD for each bug. So for these uh, thousands of code uh, of bugs that we have actually solved together, they actually represent one million reduction in terms of the technical debt. So that's a very, very good outcome for the customer of mine. So in terms of uh, team engagement, there are more than 100 developers actually came for the kickoff. And out of these 100 developers, we actually have 40 of them that actually registered themselves on the bug bus portal and participate. Um, it brought together teams from different um, organizations, different applications, and from different countries. So you can imagine that most uh, developers will work uh, usually in their own teams, right? So through this bucketon, we actually allow these teams to come together to interact, and they kind of cross pollinate that way, right? So they bring about new ideas. Uh, if that's the best practice that they have seen before, um, that could work for the other team as well, they could educate the other team, right? So that's one of the tangible benefit that we can see from the event as well. So we hosted a closing ceremony to recognize and reward the developers. And I'm pleased to share that we, we actually have five developers from my customer they have actually became part of, won, won the award. Uh, they were part of the top 10 in the Global Bug Bus Challenge, and they have won for themselves an all expense paid trip, right, uh, to this reinvent. So awesome results over there. Very cool. So Wayne mentioned before, a lot of the low hanging fruit was kind of picked up in the first couple of days, the repetitive days. We've, we've gamified this, of course, so anytime you gamify, you have to be careful what you incent. Um, the bugs are sorted by type and severity, and the system assigns different point levels to them. So the repetitive bugs have a much smaller point total, but of course those can be fixed quickly, and the more detailed or involved bugs, especially the security-related bugs, those are going to have a higher point total, 
Um, so even though those took a little bit longer, they, there's more reward for that. And we're playing with that concept and, and seeing how we can incent the right behavior. Bug Bust is built on top of Code Guru Reviewer. So Wayne was talking about how they came in, they specify the date range that they want to have for the events, they associate a set of, of code repos uh, with the event. Um, the association of code repos uh, is essentially Code Guru Reviewer technology. Uh, are part of that application. Uh, we support uh, GitHub and Bitbucket and, and uh, several of the major repos. You do that association, you fire it off, uh, and it will come back with the list of bugs in these different categories. We broadly support uh, nine categories, depending on how you kind of choose to divide it up. Um, we support uh, issues related to AWS APIs, so uh, polling and pagination. Uh, concurrency issues, code maintainability issues, resource leaks, like are we releasing the uh, database connections, um, sensitive information links. Uh, so we just launched a secrets manager integration this past week, which is looking for you to put key credentials and things like that in plain text in your code. Um, common coding practices, input validation. We've got a really cool one out there too, which is called the inconsistency detector. It's kind of a, a slightly more advanced form of machine learning where it actually looks at how you've developed the rest of your code base to see if there are areas of your code that are very different from those and calls those out uh, with inconsistency issues. Um, the point, of course, is that we're trying to automate this as uh, much as possible. We're trying to use the data science to, to both identify the bugs, but then work and make sure that the game that's put together for your developers is fun and engaging. So Wayne referenced before the event that we had been running up until a few, works a few weeks before reInvent, we had been running a global uh, challenge where companies could set up a private challenge for their own developers, but those uh, points that they were awarded would be shown on a global leadership board, uh, and we did award the top 10 trips to reInvent, so we're super excited to have them with us here. Um, we are currently running our first annual Bug Bust reInvent challenge. What we're trying to do is we're trying to create the largest single Bug Bust event and see if we can break a few records of how many uh, bugs can be fixed by developers uh, in the same base. Instead of using uh, private code bases from private companies, uh, we've connected uh, several of the largest open source repos that are out there. So when you sign up and fix bugs, you're actually contributing back to the open source communities in general. Uh, we would love for, we're, we're looking for a few more people to put us over that record. The booth is over in the expo. People can hold your hand and help you fix a few bugs, but you get a chance to kind of test out the platform. Uh, you can go to bugbus.aws uh, and register with your email account, uh, claim a couple of bugs, fix them, check them into uh, GitHub, and away we go. Of course, if you do that, we've got lots of cool prizes, not just the bragging rights for participating in the largest bug bust event ever and helping us exterminate one million bugs. They're giving away uh, Echo Dots to the top 100 uh, performers. They've got hoodies and bug jars, like it's literally a jar, which maybe you put on your desk or in the back of your virtual screen. Um, all the way down to bug bus fly swatters. Who, who wouldn't want a bug bus fly swatter? We appreciate you taking the time to come to listen uh, about bug bus. Wayne and I are, are gonna hang out over here beside the stage if you have questions that you wanna ask us. Um, but I really do hope you go participate uh, in the reInvent Challenge, give you a chance to check out the uh, platform and see what it's all about. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.